So the first one here, how many gallons does this tank hold? It's really just a matter of finding the volume. The volume of that is 38 by 26 would be the area of the base, and then times the 9. At this point, if it's a box, we can go ahead and cheat. Just do length times width, which is the area of the base times the height. So what does that give us? Eight thousand eight hundred ninety-two cubic inches. Converting that into gallons. What's our conversion? Do you remember from yesterday? Perfect. One gallon is two hundred thirty-one cubic inches. So we are going to take eight thousand eight hundred ninety-two cubic inches. Put it over one. <clears throat> Putting cubic inches on bottom and gallons on top. One gallon is 231. And since it's on bottom, it's telling us that we're going to have to divide. So we're going to take the 8892 divided by 231. <clears throat> Oops, I did times. Thirty-eight point four nine gallons. How many of you had 38.5 basically for gallons? Did his feet? Did you get the same or? No, I got 168.7 gallons. If you'd have done it in feet, you would add 38 twelfths, right? No. Times 26 twelfths would have been that, times 9 twelfths. So what you would have had. So you got 5.14 cubic feet? Yeah, I didn't convert them higher. I didn't convert them there. Oh, you didn't convert them into feet? Okay. Once you've got cubic feet, then it's going to be times 7.48. Still should give you the same. You can see it's a little bit different because it's a little bit of a round off, so. <clears throat> Remember, the 231 cubic inches in a gallon is not exact, and the 7.48 gallons in a cubic foot is not exact. So you can see, I think it was, what, 38.493 when we did it before? Sorry, it's just a slightly round off difference. <clears throat> now, for this one, there are two ways we can approach this. We can convert our inches into centimeters right away, and we can do it that way. Or we could do it as inches, cubic inches, and convert that into the cubic centimeters. We're going to do it both ways, just to make sure you guys know how to do it both ways. So if we leave it, or we convert to centimeters. So you've got 20 inches over 1. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. So that means we've got 50.8 centimeters for that dimension. <clears throat> then we do the same for the 35. So 35 times 2.54, 88.9. That is for that dimension. <clears throat> so if we had it this way, this is a diameter here, the 50.8. The radius would be half of that, or 25.4 centimeters. So we get the area of our base, the area of this circle, it's going to be pi times 25.4 squared. So 
3.14 times 25.4 squared. 20, 25.8 centimeters squared. That's the area of the base. So the volume is going to be that area of the base times that length of 88.9 centimeters. So 180,093. 0.83 centimeters cubed. Now I asked how many liters that is. <clears throat> Yesterday, do you remember what our equivalency was between centimeters cubed and capacities? One cubic centimeter is equal to one what? Milliliter. So this is 180,000, I don't know why I put a dollar sign on that, 180,093.83 milliliters. One centimeter cubed is one milliliter. But I asked for liters to get from milliliters to liters, three spots to the left. So 180.09 liters. Nope. I think you wrote it on the chart. Remember, it's liters, deciliters, centiliters, milliliters. So one, two, three spots to the left. Just move the decimal point. Three spots to the left. Does that make sense? You still are confused, Jeff. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> That's something we gave yesterday. Is one centimeter cubed is one milliliter is defined to be one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. Now, had we chosen to find the area and or the volume in inches, the area of our base is going to be pi times ten squared because with a diameter of twenty, the radius is ten, so it's going to be three hundred and fourteen inches squared. So then the volume be 314 inches squared times the 35 inches of length. So 10,990 cubic inches. Now we need to convert that into cubic centimeters. We know inches are bigger, so it's going to be one cubic inch. Cubi how many cubic centimeters are in one cubic inch? Well, how many centimeters are in one inch? 2.54. If it's cubed, we're going to cube that 2.54. 16.387. if you wanted to. But we'll go 16.387. So that's going to be our, our 10,000. 990 times 16.387. So 180,093.83. Does that number look familiar? Then from there it'll be the same to get it into liters. The biggest point I wanted to do with this second problem was just this conversion. I mean, the easiest way to do it is to convert both measurements into centimeters right away. But for most people, their reflex is to find the volume right away and try to work from there. And if you do that, if you know the linear conversion, you will always know the area and volume conversions. Even though this is in cubic inches and we're trying to go to cubic centimeters, you know one inch is 2.54 centimeters. Because you know that, then you know that one cubic inch is 2.54 cubed, or 16.387 cubic centimeters. 
Is that whole idea of doing conversions with squared units and cubed units, is there any questions on that? Are you guys feeling okay with that? The trouble is just seeing it and remembering to do it? Okay. Because that is one that a lot of people miss. Okay, well, today we are going to talk about weight and mass. And to really talk about weight and mass, we must first define the difference between weight and mass. Most people think weight and mass are the same thing and kind of use them interchangeably. And we are guilty of doing that a lot in some of our math stuff too. But there is a big difference between weight and mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Literally the amount of particles that are within that object. How much stuff is in that object. And mass is measured on a balance. The way a balance works is this. Think of like a teeter-totter or a seesaw. You put the object that we're trying to measure on one side. Then on the other side we put known masses. And once it balances, Whatever this known mass is, is the mass that we assign to our object that we're balancing. Weight is the force of gravity on the object. Weight is measured slightly differently. Weight is measured by using a spring. If you have a spring that's sitting there with no weight on it, and then of course you hang weight on it, it's going to stretch out like this. Well, the amount a spring stretches is directly proportional to the force on that object. But once you hang this, this object on that spring, it's gravity, the force of gravity on it becomes the force on the spring. So this spring probably has some sort of a scale with an indicator on it, like that. And once we put our object on it, as the spring stretches, that indicator moves down with the spring and it... The reason it's called a scale is because it's on some sort of a numbered scale. And you see where that indicator ends up. It tells you how much force, how much the spring stretched, and how much force is on that object. So that is weight. Now you might be looking at that and saying, okay, well, big deal. How is that different? Well, because this depends on gravity. This over here does not depend on gravity. It is a property of the object, not of the gravitational force. Well, you might be looking at it and say, well, you can't measure mass without gravity. But here's what I mean by this depends on gravity and does not. If I go to the moon, on the moon, there is one-sixth the gravity that there is on Earth. So if I'm on the moon, this isn't going to pull near as far. It might only pull down to here. So this indicator is going to be up here somewhere. Right? So instead of going from here all the way down to here, it's only going to go this far. Because there's going to be less force. It's going to stretch less. Over here, yeah, the force of gravity on this is going to be less because we're on the moon. But the force of gravity on our known mass is also going to be less. It's still going to be the same mass that balances it. So the, the mass is constant regardless of the gravity that we're in. <clears throat> anyway, now that we've defined all that, 
on earth, we tend to use mass and weight interchangeably. Mainly because on earth, gravity is relatively constant. <coughs> Most people think of the earth as being a perfect sphere. It's not. It's oblong like that. Gravity is slightly less at the equator, and it is slightly more at the poles. <coughs> now, a 200-pound person, if they went to the equator, would probably pay, weigh maybe two or three pounds less. If they went to the poles, they'd probably weigh two or three pounds more. We're talking about a 1% difference either direction. You know, we're coming from here. So, I mean, there might be a four or five-pound swing. You know, a total of 2% total tolerance. But that's close enough that we don't worry about it. So on Earth, we tend to use mass and weight interchangeably. The reason I'm bringing this up is in our standard system, we tend to focus on weight, the, for, the force of gravity. I mean, Newton discovered gravity and weight, the whole theory of weight and everything came from, from that. Um, it was later on that the idea of mass was developed. In the metric system, they tend to focus on mass. So when we start talking about converting between the standard and metric systems, we're actually talking about converting a standard weight into a metric mass, which is a bit sloppy. But as long as we're still on Earth, it works. So let's look at standard system. And I'm going to start out with mass because most people have never heard of mass. Does anybody know the unit of mass in the standard system? You're thinking metric. In the standard system, the unit of mass is a slug. You ever heard the phrase, I got a whole slug of whatever? No? Um, one slug is roughly 32 pounds. On Earth's gravity. Like I said, that mass to weight conversion depends on gravity. But in Earth's gravitation, um, one slug of mass weighs about 32 pounds. That's all we're going to talk about mass in here. You're never going to have to do any conversions with it. It's just, you know what the unit is. So now we're going to talk about weight. In the standard system of weight, um, in the standard system of weight, we're going to go with our largest unit first, which is a ton. How big is a ton? Okay, 2,000 pounds is what we're used to having for a ton. That is technically what we call one net or short ton. Now, if we have a net or short ton, it implies that we have a gross or long ton. A gross or long ton is 2,240 pounds. What's the difference? Well, um, think of your paycheck. If you work 40 hours a week and you're getting paid 12 bucks an hour, you've earned 480 bucks. That's your gross. That's everything you've earned. Do you get $480? No, they take out taxes and all sorts of other crap and they might give you like 300 bucks. That's your net. That's what you actually get. It's the same here. The ton was originally used for trading grain, buying and selling grain. But you couldn't put a ton of grain on the scale, it would fall off. So you had to have a container to put it in. The container that held about a ton of grain weighed about 240 pounds. So the gross weight of the grain with the container was 2,240. The net weight of just the grain was 2,000 pounds. Now, 99.999% 9, of the time when you hear the word ton, they're talking 2,000 pounds. In this class, we will always use 2,000 pounds. We will always use a net ton. I may throw the word net or short in there with the ton, 
Don't let it confuse you. It's still a 2,000 pound ton. So we have pounds. It would make sense to abbreviate pounds PD, but in the bookkeeping system for buying and selling grain, PD was already used as the abbreviation for paid. They didn't want to confuse the two. So they used the Latin word for pound, which is Libra. So they used LB. What's our next unit smaller than a pound? Ounce. How many ounces are in a pound? 16 ounces in a pound. They did the same for, since they used the Latin word for pound, they used the Latin word for ounce as well, and I can't remember what it is right now. But it came out to be OZ. Anybody know what the unit is that's smaller than an ounce? It sounds metric, but it's not. A dram. There are 16 drams in an ounce. A dram was one of the original apothecary units. You might be prescribed an eighth of a dram of a medication or a quarter of a dram. Now, smaller than a dram, and we, what's that? A drum. A drum is 55 gallons. <laughs> There's a grain. A grain does not have an equivalency to a dram or to an ounce. But there are 7,000 7, grains in one pound. If you've ever, uh, grains were originally used for medications as well. It's also used for measuring out gunpowder, stuff like that. Anybody that reloads their own shells, anything like that, we'll deal with grains. Now, there's other units like a stone. A stone is 14 pounds or about 14 pounds. A hundred weight, of course, is 100 pounds. Um, all those are obsolete. They're not used only in special cases. Um, like your uh, weightlifting, they'll use stones yet. World's strongest man, they'll use stones. Yep. For some of that. What's that? Every stone's on my ground. Oh, yeah? No. <laughs> now, one thing I want to mention before we move on to the metric is you hear a lot on the news about gold is up to $1,700 an ounce or whatever. They're not talking about these ounces and pounds. We had talked about with uh, length, even, that. Um, different rulers in different countries had declared that their thumb and their foot or whatever were going to be the official inches and feet of the land. So from one country to the next, the standard units were not the same. Well, the same happened with pounds, tons, ounces, and whatever. Now, precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, and all that, the center, the world center for trading those was the island of Troy in the Mediterranean Sea. So when we... And, of course, their pound and ounce were different than ours. So when we trade precious metals, we tend to use something called Troy measure. One Troy pound is only about 0.82 of our English standard pound or American pounds. <clears throat> I guess we're not supposed to call it English standard anymore because England doesn't use them, but... The, American standard pounds. We're talking about Troy, Troy. Troy, yeah. The yeah, island of Troy. And all that. Yep. It's a real island, but I'm right. not really sure if the whole battle of Troy really occurred. Right. I don't think Achilles really got shot in the heel or anything right. like that. But, yeah. One Troy pound <laughs> contains only 12. <laughs> Troy ounces. So a troy pound is considerably smaller than our standard pound. But a troy ounce is actually slightly larger than our standard ounce. Because there's only 12 of them in a pound. Now I will never test you on this. But it's just something for you to be aware of. 
And if you're looking at a troy ounce or whatever of gold or silver or whatever, it's not our standard ounce. That's it. Yeah, for gold and silver, they. Yep, that's the type. When they're talking about ounces of gold or silver, they're talking about troy ounces. <coughs> And of course, our conversions are going to work the same. We're going to use your conversion factors. So let's say somebody wants to sell you 40 troy ounces of silver. How heavy is that going to be? Well, we need to know what the conversion is between our ounce and their ounce. Well, we're going to do this. We'll convert to troy pounds. So I put troy ounces on bottom. So now we're in troy pounds. And then we'll do troy pounds to our standard pounds. And then we'll convert back to our ounces. Because we didn't have that direct conversion from troy ounces to standard ounces. We had to go to troy pounds, troy pounds to regular pounds, regular pounds to ounces. So this is telling us now, we're going to take 40 divided by 12, divided by 0.82, and then times 16. So it's going to be actually 65 ounces. So 40 troy ounces is 65 standard ounces. So it's a considerable difference. Make sure they're just there. Yeah. Oops, I did that backwards. Never mind. Just a second. This one's backwards, isn't it? I was going to say, you're not going to want to be using more silver than you Oh, it still does come out to be more. Is it? Yep. Let's try that again. It's one troy pound is 0.82 regular pounds. I'll do the other one. So it's 40 divided by 12 times 0.82 times 16. 43.73. That looks better. It is all, it's like 9% more is what it usually comes out to be. 9.5% more. It's just under 10% more from the troy to standard. All right, let's look at the metric system. In our metric system, we're going to start out with metric weight. The unit of weight in the metric system is the Newton. One Newton is about um, 9.8, or one kilogram. Weighs about 9.8 newtons. Let's talk about then what we concentrate on. We're not really, really talking about newtons at all in here. What we usually concentrate on is mass. The unit of mass is the gram. Abbreviated with just a G. A gram is approximately the size of a paper clip as far as mass. One gram, by the way, is defined to be the mass of one milliliter of water. Don't forget that, because that will come back up. Like those tanks I gave you at the beginning of class today. Rather than asking you how many liters or how many gallons, I might ask you how many grams, how many kilograms of water. So we have grams, just like before, we got decigrams, centigrams, milligrams. Going the other way, we've got decagrams, hectograms, kilograms. And the conversions are the exact same as any of our other metric measurements. If I have 2.8 grams and I want to go into milligrams, I move my decimal point. 
Move your spots to the right. So that's 2,800 milligrams. Now the big conversion, one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. So let's say you weigh 250 pounds. Cancel out the pounds, 250 divided by 2.2. You're going to weigh about 113.63 or 64 kilograms. Now, the other thing you should know, you know, we kept going up, and the next one, you know, kilogram is 1,000 grams. The next one up was mega gram or a million grams in this case that is defined to be one metric ton so one metric ton is a thousand kilograms it's usually defined as a thousand kilograms rather than a million grams now there's 2.2 technically it's like 2.208 whatever pounds in a kilogram um, so it's about 2,200, 2,208 metric ton. Metric ton. Um, we won't for this course, but you might use it for stuff you know, later on for other things. Okay, in the big book. Page 255, it is exercise 8-11. 256, it's exercise 8-12. Page 275, it is exercise 9-13. And page 276, it is exercise 9-14. Tomorrow, we will be finishing up this unit. So that means Friday morning, we'll have our test. We will take the first hour of class to do our test, and then I'll let you take it home and finish it up over the weekend. Second hour of class, we'll be starting new material. But our next unit is heavy, heavy algebra, so be prepared.